Bev Carra. So welcome everybody and thank you for um, joining us on this Friday afternoon. Um, I don't know about you guys, but in Suffolk it's absolutely scorching. It was a bit of a dismal morning this morning, but it's the sun's getting brighter. So I think it's going to welcome us with a beautiful weekend. Um, today we've got um, Kevin Honrake. He's, um, he's here today to discuss a whole range of different things. Um, basically, he's a member of the parliamentary group for um, Fair Business Banking. I sat with Kevin, it must have been all a couple of weeks ago now, Kevin, on a debate which was which was being held with a number of um, senior bankers, um, Department for Business Innovation and Skills, and we were just seeing how certain things were being put together with regards to bounce back loans, um, C bills, you know, all of the different aspects which are affecting small businesses at the moment. And um, one of the things from an NEM perspective I wanted to do was actually raise some of the direct questions which we're getting from some of our clients um, with Kevin's. So we've got a good question and answer session here, um, and to have a real upbeat discussion not in any one of the sort of like this is a problem let's, let's give it a good kick in about how do we work with these what do we do where do we take it to kevin's a businessman as well so he understands a lot of the the scars and the pains which um we experience whether that's cash flow or um staffing and all those things which challenge us at 4 30 in the morning when everyone else is tucked up in bed <laughs> um and what i want us to do is just explain um some of those pressures which we're seeing from the smaller businesses and how he may be able to have an influence over how we change some of these um these these processes in order to make it a lot easier for us as agencies um, i know carol would like us to do introductions so so kevin's aware of uh, everybody who's in the in in the frame shall we say um so should we start with that now carol and many yeah. thanks to you kevin for sparing us your time this afternoon yeah so if i start i'm carol daniels i'm operations manager for national enterprise network um patricia would you like to go next yeah patricia marks director at somerset business agency um, and we support people getting into self-employment, small businesses, as well as um, supporting people in skills and training. Thank you. Graham? Hello, I'm Graham Marley. I'm Chief Executive of the Let's Do Business Group. Uh, we provide business support services across the southeast and east of England. Uh, we're also a community development finance institution and accredited to, to deliver C-bills. Uh, and we're a startup loan provider as well. Mm. Thank you. Mel? Mel Hill Brown, Executive Director of St Albans Enterprise Agency. We're one of the small characters in this in this group here that we just focus on our local district. Um, we're currently delivering the Heart Startup Programme, which is an ERDF funded programme in conjunction with Wenter, uh, which is another agency, and Decorum Borough Council who have a free advice service. So we're all the free advice services available in Hertfordshire. Okay, thank you. Um, Andy, Andy Skinner. Hi, Andy Skinner from AMS Business Consultants in Ipswich, um, focused on supporting SMEs with process improvement, process management and process design. Okay, thank you. Peter. Uh, so Peter Robertson looking at some grey clouds out of the window in North Yorkshire that Kevin will be looking at. So, so don't rub it in, Alex. No, Perhaps. sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, so non-exec on the NEN board, uh, run my own business, Prime Media, uh, Prime Media Solutions, and also uh, Genolink, which is an online PR agency. But uh, long banking, uh, former job having been head of business banking at NetWest. Okay, thank you. Ta Tony? Hi, uh, Tony Goldstein from South East Enterprise Managing Director. Um, we provide business support just in Greenwich, so we're a fairly small player. Um, we concentrate on uh, digital though, so our program is all about e-business. We just work with trading businesses. Um, also, um, Director of Business for London, which is a consortium of seven enterprise agencies in London. Uh, and we're, we look to uh, sort of promote local enterprise agencies uh, you know, within London. Uh, to, to you know to have a sort of a greater voice uh, for the work that we do you know as a collective okay thank you jeff i uh, jeff franson uh, from startup Croydon, and we provide uh, startup uh, training and advice uh, to uh, pre-starts and early stage businesses but also office accommodation and uh, other managed office services uh, for Croydon and the surrounding area and also the, we're part of the uh, business of london consortium as well Okay, thank you. Aileen? Hello, um, I'm Aileen Evans. I run one of the uh, a small enterprise agency um, in the Northwest. We're based in Accrington, home of Accrington Stanley in Lancashire. 
um, and we work with small startup businesses um, and also with businesses in the uh, early years of trading. Um, we're, we're a delivery partner for the startup loans and we've been delivering the Start and Grow programme as well. Thank you. Um, and finally to you, Matt. Hi, sorry I was late. Um, I'm standing in for Sarah Williams, so we're from the um, Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce based in Stoke-on-Trent and we are obviously various support um, functions for SMEs, for startups, but all the way through to existing trading businesses as well. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, um, that's everybody's introduced themselves. I don't think I've missed anybody. Um, so if I hand over to you now, Kevin. Yes, um, I'll skip through it quite quickly, what we do in the APPG. So you've got plenty of time for questions and it's still, I'm delighted to be here. You know, I'm, as Ali said earlier on, I'm, I'm SME through and through. That's my background. I regard myself as more business person than, than member of parliament really, although, um, but I want to be a member of parliament because I, I felt I could do some good, particularly for SMEs. So, and um, yeah, I've been in business for 30 years. Um, still in business now, still chairman of a company, a company we've grown from small beginnings to a national business. Um, I was also for some time uh, connected with Yorkshire Connect, which is a business advice organisation. I was an entrepreneur in residence for them. So I absolutely am um, quite envious of the work you do, actually. I think it's a massive privilege to be advising businesses and giving them the opportunity to, to start up and grow. And um, so I think great work that you do. The All Party Group really focuses on trying to establish a fair and level playing field between banks and businesses. And we know when things go wrong, it's either trying to get finance or when businesses have got finance and perhaps business isn't as good or things don't turn out as expected, making sure people are treated fairly through that process. And um, so most of my work has been in dispute resolution, a lot of the fallout from the last recession, there's still not been quite resolved but um, when this crisis hit we moved we shifted our attention really into making sure that the the finance schemes that were out there both the grant schemes but also the loan schemes were fit for purpose and uh, it's fair to say they weren't they weren't right at the start the civil scheme was too there's too much forward looking uh, there's too much too big a requirement to do business plans for the next few months and everybody knew that was just impossible so um and also there was this massive gap below all the schemes were 25k plus and um and really we knew the big demand was below 25k certainly below 50k so um so we work very closely with treasury and and it's great to be on the call with you today because lots of the stuff we tell the treasury is from people like yourselves they're at the coal face to understand exactly what's going on so um and since we got involved with those schemes those schemes were dying on their feet and suddenly uh, Sybils was improved, took away the forward requirement for forward guidance, um, forward uh, viability test, and the introduction of the, of the bounce back loans, which were pretty much a, a self certification uh, process. Um, the scheme went from delivering very few loans to over a million loans and 50 billion quid of money gone out through the scheme. So, some real successes. Um, more recent successes, we've got the removal of the undertaking in difficulty or SMEs and Sybils that happened yesterday, which is great. That was preventing some uh, kind of more scale up SMEs getting finance. And so we st but we've still got things to do. I'd say particular areas we've got things to do. We've still got lots of lenders who cannot get access to, the to, to finance, liquidity to lend on to their SMEs. So you're familiar with this, non-bank lenders, CDFIs, which you know, you've got CDFIs represented today. So and what, there's a number of different ways we can do this. So yes, great, if you're with one of the high street banks, you get your bounce back loan. If you're with Tide or you're with a CDFI or, or if you're with Capital on Tap, um, you, you can't, there's, there's a real limitation on access to bounce back loans. We know the big banks who can get access to the term funding scheme for SMEs, we can get really cheap, cheap finance from the Bank of England, you know, all this stuff. They're close to new customers. So I'm, if I'm not, not with any of those um, banks or I've got, even got a personal account with those banks, the big banks, I'm pretty cut off. So a million success, great. There's probably 100, 200,000 businesses who have not uh, at the moment got access to finance. So we either get a term funding scheme for non-bank lenders or we get the banks to lend, take money and lend it on to the non-bank lenders and fintechs. 
um, or we make sure we pressure the banks to open the doors to new customers. We've got to get a solution out the door pretty quickly. And we think this problem will be with us for some time. We don't see everybody got it, having got the finance they need by November. I think these schemes will be needed for some months yet, if not years. So we work closely with HM Treasury, uh, the banks, UK Finance, uh, in trying to trying to shape these schemes and um, so please after today very keen to hear any experiences you've got and we'll take up any issues you have that need looking at either with um, the banks themselves or with treasury the other thing we're doing as well we're looking at the aftermath of course it's the other big piece of work is that there will be disputes between between businesses and banks a lot of the businesses who have taken finance even some that haven't uh, will run into trouble we need to make sure they're treated fairly in the aftermath if they run into trouble, if they can't repay their loans or they just um, can't pay their debts. We need to make sure if there's any restructuring required or insolvency problems and they're treated fairly. Very pleased to help to shape some of the insolvency reforms that came through quite recently, which will help. The moratoriums and the restructuring provisions now it's within insolvency and redress. So we got the expansion of the financial ombudsman service so that it deals with larger companies now and on top of that we've got the new business banking resolution service to deal with companies up to 10 million turnover so there's proper alternative dispute resolution um, services that act, that um, make judgments on a fair and reasonable basis because as you know commercial lending is not regulated so there's no requirement for banks to treat uh, customers fair, fairly and reasonably if things go wrong so redress we need to make sure we uh, we look at that and people are treated fairly and we need to make sure that uh, we need to look at other types of um other solutions we know that these lots of businesses will be laden with debt whether it's equity based solutions whether it's contingent tax liabilities like a student loan solution for some of this debt rather than simply you've got to pay it back over three or six months three or six years um to uh to try and make sure as many businesses get through the next few months and few years as possible but there's going to be some trouble ahead so uh, your advice services are going to be very very useful and very very keen to work with your members to be able to uh, say shape our policy asks but also make sure that we can we can try and um, understand what's going on at the sharp end so i'll leave it there and invite questions okay so um if people just want to raise their hand um um, if they've, they've got a question. Graham? Uh, thanks, Kevin. That's, that's really interesting. Um, and I'm glad you've identified the lack of capital availability for CDFIs and, and, and the like. Um, being based in the South, I, I guess we have an even bigger challenge than some of our counterparts to the North, um, with the Northern Powerhouse Midlands Engine and the Cornwall and Isle of Scilly Funds. We don't have anything like that. Um, in the south and as an organization that's been the case since we started lending um, around 16 years ago just as we've built up a head of steam our capitals run dry and we've had to um, retrench what we've been been doing we've just um, launched this week one and a half million pound sea bills fund with our partner which is unity trust bank mm -hmm. very helpful in levering up against reserves that we've had but one and a half million doesn't really go very far when you're covering an area that covers um essex kent sussex yes. and into hampshire so from our point of view our ask would be for the government to be looking at a, a fund similar to that in those other areas for, for the south because i think you're right i think this challenge is going to be here for probably years to come and our, our usual market which is you know the micro and smaller end of small businesses i think they're really going to struggle um you know once sea bills and bounce back loan either go or get sort of um uh, the benefits reduced to the banking sector i think they're going to see the micro and smes as very high risk and that's the time that cdfis can really play a part across the country 
Yeah, and I totally agree. And I'm a big fan of the CDFIs. Uh, we work closely with them in our neck of the woods as well, uh, BEF and others, and they do a great job. And um, so, um, yeah, I totally agree. And b business, you have a social purpose. Business has a social purpose. And we've got to develop a social purpose. One of the disappointing things, I guess, um, and I'm you know, a free marketeer, no doubt about it, but um, I believe business is a force for good. And, you know, I think we've tried to do the right thing in our business all in the last 30 years. I think banks somehow lost sight of that. Yeah. And, um, and they've got a social purpose. They should have a social purpose as well as a commercial purpose. And um, you've got RBS now, for example, that's... Um, that is pretty much well, majority owned by the taxpayer um, is closed to new bounce back loans from new customers and it won't provide finance on it won't take term funding scheme for SMEs and lend it on to other uh, organizations who, who have demand from customers and there's no reason why that can't go through to CD, CDFIs for me man. so um, um, whether it's government solutions whether we put pressure on the banks to do the right thing as the Bank of England come up with something. I, I asked Andrew Bailey this week about um, term funding scheme for you know for um, non-bank lenders and for CDFIs, and it was like just scratching his head. We've looked at that and we couldn't really find a solution. It's, it's not mm. good enough. You can't leave people out in the cold. I don't believe that's right. That's what we've done before. We think we seem to think because we serve the vast majority, the the, the rump that's left doesn't really matter. I I fundamentally disagree with that. Yeah, so uh, yeah. very keen to make sure that um, you get access to finance for your for your potential customers, and it's it's very much this also the um, the, the the rump that's left uh, I think is is a lot lot more businesses than people are conscious of. So uh, the government has always been very disparaging of micro businesses. They've always been interested in fast growth businesses, yeah. but the last recession. A million people, mostly in non-fast growth businesses, who started up their own business during that recession, got the government off the hook last time round. Yeah. A hook that they were put on by the banks and their irresponsibility. So it's really doubly galling that the banks are not seeing it as their social duty to actually make up for what they did last time and actually dig in and bail some stuff out here. Totally agree with that. Um, I mean, to be fair, the banks have turned things around pretty quickly in terms of civils and bounce back loans. They've been very short notice to do it. And I think they do want to restore the reputation. Um, they do feel this is a, a moment in time they can be seen to have done the right thing. But, but I think they do the right thing until it starts to cost them money. Then they think, oh my God, that's, that's, a, bit, that's a bit too difficult. And we've got to get past that. If there, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity now to, to say, yes, we'll do bounce back loans, right across the piece for new customers. I mean, it's just not acceptable to say we're closed for new customers. And you look on our website and you'll see there's a list of all the banks and, and the HSBC are open to new customers, but it takes weeks to open an account. It's just not acceptable. So, um, so I, I agree from the bank's perspective, but I also agree, you know, I, I've heard time and time again in the house, oh my, yes, the um, SMEs are the backbone of our economy. Yeah, well, okay, let's start treating them like they are. You know, that's, it is, and I agree, oh yes, we're interested in scale-ups, we're interested in fintechs, we're interested in these kinds of stuff. The future, for, I mean, Rishi, the Chancellor's a brilliant guy, but the future fund is, like you say, it's for kind of high-growth companies. It's, you know, this, these kind of companies that are stuck in the middle, there's hmm. ambitious companies perhaps, or even less ambitious ones, that will grow, and will, employ, will create employment opportunities, and, and um they kind of left out in the cold right now. So we've got to find solutions right across the piece. Lots been achieved, but lots more that we need to do. It's also ironic that actually the businesses, if you can predict what a high growth business is, and I'm not sure that one can, but um, if you could predict it, um, I'm sure the market would look after that as there would be commercial providers quite comfortably dealing with that. Absolutely. You know, government should be filling the gaps that the commercial providers don't. So they shouldn't be chasing fast growth businesses, but they should be helping much more needy businesses to, to become fast growth businesses somewhere along the way. 100%. I, listen, I'm, I'm much more, I, I favour 
more just increasing the incentives for private sector to come in and do this. Yeah. You know, EIS, EIS and SEIS, great schemes. I've launched a number of businesses off the back of that, yeah. very varying degrees of success. But I mean, just double the incentives for a year. Take away the restrictions about family relationships. Just make it, and this is all crisis stuff. Um, there's lots of things you can do to get private sector, to leverage private sector investment, as well as you say, with, you know, Future Fund, which is incentivized kind of private equity VCs to come in and fund businesses. Um, and there's other stuff we can do there as well in terms of taking the lifetime limits off the VC limits and things. So, um, but I entirely agree with you. You know, it's, it's the old adage about looking after the pennies, the pound look after themselves. And I think this is a, a good adage, adage and way to look at SMEs too. Excellent. One of the challenges with, with the future fund is it, it, in effect that you don't get the benefit of EIS. So our existing fund and investors will be reluctant to come in because they don't get the benefit of EIS because of this converting loan and the conditions associated with future fund. The other issue is also that the government keeps telling us that they're putting more money into um, Innovate UK. But the problem is, is that Innovate UK, once again, when you look at who they grant loans to, they grant loans to universities, to biotech companies, to large corporates who essentially have R&D teams who mm. the government is funding. Now, there is rationale, I understand the government's rationale for let's ensure that the UK stays at the forefront of innovation. But the challenge is that when they talk about unicorns and successful startups that have grown, None of these came out of the universities. They came out of hubs. They came out of uni yeah. innovation hubs. So when they refer to TransferWise or Revolut and these companies that have become uh, large, large unicorns that they've heard of, they took six or seven rounds to get funding. And so were largely in debt before they grew the size that they did. Cool. So the infrastructure is not there. But in addition to that, it, it, what the government forgets is that at least 2.4 million businesses are, small, are family businesses and they support local communities. And in order for us to really ensure that they are set up for success, they need support beyond just monetary support. They need more confidence. They need um, education. They need support. And one of the things that we were just talking to the British Business Bank this morning is that how can we do that? How can we support them? with an infrastructure that ensures that they have access to everything that they need. We know that some, sometimes it's a reluctance and ambition. They just want to run their businesses and employ four people. And that's enough because it's serving the community. Yeah. But, they, but I, think, I think, Mel, you made this point about these are businesses, micro businesses, that have been around for decades and they've weathered all sorts of storms and they continue to support local communities. Mm. I think those sorts of schemes that encourage those sorts of businesses to bring in apprentices to support new um, schemes for people to be able to enhance that education as well as the monetary support will go above and beyond. But what British Business Bank told us is that when they conducted their survey of small businesses, they recognized that the minute they get a rejection from the bank, they don't go, they don't go back. So 74% will not pursue the bank for alternative funding options and will not know where to look for alternative funding options. Yeah different ways there are ways in which you can do this that in invoice factoring is one of the things that we're seeing growing yeah. increasingly but they don't know where to go so yeah. governments accredited schemes supporting uh, funding options supporting the uh, the right people like the national enterprise scheme um, national enterprise network will provide them with accredited and trusted uh, organizations who can support them in growth our business yeah. doesn't do that but sure. I think it's the challenge, and that's what we're hearing from small businesses. How do I pivot online? But who is there to support me to yeah. pivot my business online? Yeah, a number of points there. I, I, in terms of the EIS point, I, I, I think I was dealt with in the finance bill. So EIS, SAS wasn't excluded from the future fund now. There was, there was some amendment to the, I don't know if that tackles the problem you're referring to. But it, it took it took quite a long time because one of the things that we we have found at this point in at this stage is that speed has been of the essence. We have had businesses said we've got two weeks left before we run out of cash. Yes, totally. Operating on a thousand pounds. Totally. Yeah. No, I just don't get that, and you know we've been pressuring the bank uh, on uh, the, sorry, the treasury on many different areas and it is frustrating i mean to be fair some of the things have been brought out of scale and, and it worked effectively the uh, job retention scheme 
SEISS um, and, the, and the loans themselves, although they weren't all that fit for purpose right at the start, they were brought forward quickly and ultimately the bounce back loan thing did work really effectively. But um, but yeah, we did, you don't always get it right first time, that's true. In terms of education, I think Carol shared with me uh, some thoughts you'd had about um, some some that you came for the treasury to support some free time with with uh, the, your advice network, which sounds sensible. I think Bayes has just announced something, hasn't it? it announced is it a million hours of free consultancy advice uh, with the ICAW members? But um, <clears throat> so you might want to take a look at that. But definitely, it makes sense to connect businesses up with yourselves for not just money, but for. Uh, for skills and mentorship um, in terms of in terms of signposting to money uh, Peter and I have talked about this quite a lot in terms of uh, the bank referrals scheme which is should be a great place to go in terms of um, if you're rejected by a bank you automatically put it back in a kind of uh, in a cohort of people who can be then um, directed towards other people who might provide finance to you I mean, the bank referral scheme just does not operate properly at the moment and it's a great opportunity for the future i've sort of talked to rishi about it and he wants to look at it down the line and there should be some that it should be an automatic process it should be a requirement of banks to to uh, refer people into that it should be there should be service standards around it to make sure people just don't get an answer which is no and then they, they they're defeated at that point um so um lots of really really good points that uh, we need to Need to we agree with that and I was listening to the, the, the Chancellor's LinkedIn uh, post yesterday around some of the detail that he was trying to expand and unpack for small businesses. One of the things I think we need to be really wary of and I think it's great to hear that the government's taking more time to get diverse views across and the diversity of views is really critical because one of the key problems with the initial pickups that we had on things like future fund is that the government believed that the VCs were going to step in to try and ensure there was cash flow and there was financing. But that is not our experience. We, we work with over 200 different startups. We get their feedback. We have experienced it ourselves. If we're pitching to venture capitalists, what used to be the criteria and the metrics that was sufficient for you to be able to raise seed funding and uh, are no longer available to you. So now you have to have series A metrics which, which effectively mean you have to have monthly recurring revenue of in the region of 150 to 200,000 pounds in order to start even getting phone calls and taking meetings with venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. What they, they, they will say on their websites that we are seed funders, but they don't. They have pulled the rug from the Yeah, yeah, sure. They're giving a lot of startup businesses, very good MRR, very good prospects, great tender processes where they are securing um, multi-million pound deals over five or six years we will give them and mm. be forecasted but that's not enough for the VCs yeah. at this point in time and it's not enough for the banks it's never good enough to be able to meet the, the, the bank's civil civil uh, yeah. criteria but this perhaps is we can perhaps we can pick this up, up offline uh, in just concept of time we've got about 15 minutes left but um but if there's something specific you think should be done please feed through Carol can feed yeah, through to definitely. me i'm very happy to take up any ideas you have I mean, the treasury is keen for ideas it will support them all but um if you've got a well worked through idea very keen to present that to them and make sure it's seen by the people in number 11. one thing that would certainly be useful i think is is broadening the base of, Inno uh, of innovate uk again because you know 10 years ago i was referring people who had good ideas but there wasn't necessarily going to be a very clear intellectual property benefit there and it wasn't um very high tech and it wasn't uh, and now that is pretty much closed on the on on the criteria that are there so even if it was for a few years while we're trying to stimulate industry and get ideas i've had several people since with good ideas which in the past i would have pointed them towards innovate to see if they could get some yeah. proof of concept some uh, some funding towards prototyping the ideas, but they've had to do it themselves, find money elsewhere. Uh, and that was a natural source. And most of the time, those actually paid off. They, they got their money back. So it's not as though this is money that's being invested and not got back. Yeah. Um, 
Sure, and, and, there's, a, and there's a place for that, certainly with, with things where there's no obvious market and no obvious payback, but equally well, you know, I'm a big fan of there being the, the incentives there for private investors to make investments. You know, if there's, um, your banks clearly aren't going to support things with no revenue, and um, so you need to make, find mechanisms for angel investors to come in and, and invest in uh, promising startup ideas, but, um, and the EIS and SES have been very successful at that, of course, yeah. as well. But um, has anybody got a burning question that they have? The, the, Peter, I think you've got your hand yeah, up there. Let me make a couple of observations, um, Kevin. Firstly, on the um, uh, supporting the early stage ones, the investment side, just picking up that point. I mean, just having gone through it myself with one of my businesses, it is a nightmare to try and get external investment. And your yeah. point around double the EIS benefits for a year would solve it. There's a huge amount of private yeah. funding out there. Yeah. Just incentivize people to do it. We'd fix that problem pretty quickly. Um, second point I make is the million hours free support has just come out with the ICAW mm. and Enterprise Nation. I think a point's worth making from the NEN side there is great scheme, but that'll be a centralized scheme. And actually what will support most small businesses, many of the hard to reach ones, is going to be local support. Mm. And I think that's, why, that's where the NEN piece comes in, really importantly. Okay. Um, the bank referral scheme, um, uh, you know, you and I are in the same place here that that it needs to be cranked up. It needs to work properly. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you've got a model that, that puts you into a box that says now you can go somewhere else for your funding, that's great. But the point you've made quite rightly is the availability of the liquidity and a point that uh, has been raised earlier, the availability of that liquidity actually isn't there to enable those loans to be made. So great, great process, but we need to find a way of doing that. The one thing, so finally, the one thing that um, I think is the, uh, the accident waiting to happen is the repayments of the uh, bounce backs. Um, the data, I've actually sent you this morning, you won't have had time to look at it, but I sent some data to you this morning that's showing there's about 75% of those that have taken the bounce back loans haven't got adequate free cash flow to be able to repay them. So, you know, in the context of disputes that are about to arise, um, yes, that is an accident waiting to happen. Um, and the, again, I put an email to you this morning, there are models that are starting there, which will do that analysis to identify when businesses can afford to repay and actually align that. Because there's going to be, you know, it's going to be a perfect storm of banks and government saying to a, a business, yes, you can repay it, I want the money now. And actually the business doing everything they possibly can to avoid the repayment. So I think the sooner we get that fixed and, and get that sort of repayment programs done, uh, the better. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I think there's the only slight difficulty here is I know City UK came out with that report yesterday. We 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 contributed to that report, the recapitalization report. And um and they're talking about things like contingent tax liability is one of the obvious solutions. You know, you pay when you can afford it, basically. Um there's obvious moral moral hazards with that now and later. Um it's not too difficult to disguise your profits in an SME, of course. And um and also people think I'll take one of these loans because I'm never, never going to have to pay it back because that's what they're telling me now. It's, it's really going to uh, encourage the wrong type of behaviour, which this is taxpayers' money, of course. <clears throat> so, but I think there will have to be a conversation about how we deal with this, whether we're going to want to see, accept millions of SMEs going to the wall or whether we're going to um, defer repayment dates or we're going to, uh, change the type of repayment uh, pro profile so uh, to allow for a different kind of model but I think we'll certainly have that conversation and um, another equity type investments you know I think for the mid-range businesses I think there's obvious arguments there for uh, for a 3i type concept a private equity backed kind of concept with government money to come in and take a equity stakes in some businesses the Chancellor this week at the Treasury Select Committee didn't sound very keen on that idea any of those ideas. So, um, uh, and I, in principle, I agree with him. You know, uh, the government isn't there to take equity stakes in businesses, but um, I would just add normally, and this is not normal times. It's, it's the third recession I've been through. It is hopefully the shortest, but definitely the deepest. So, uh, and we don't know if it's going to be the shortest yet. So, lots of, lot, I don't think we should say never right now. I think there's lots of things we've got to, keep our minds open to. Anybody not asked a question, wants to ask a question? Somebody did ask a question before, I can't remember it was, on, um, 
on um, ERDFs. Um, so uh, you're quite, I mean, there's two things I'd say about that is, is A, the money, obviously, and B, how it's spent. So um, I think that the government's committed to maintain the kind of level of support for um, structural funds that, that uh, we've benefited from under the guise of the European Union. But um, then obviously there's an opportunity to do that differently. Uh, and some will say if it's different, it could be better. And some will say if it's different, it could be worse. So um, again, keen to hear from your perspective uh, where that's been working, where it's not been working. But I think pretty much the government's very, very keen to make sure that we do level, as you know, level up. That's the phrase. And then um, that will, should mean lots more money for lots more regions of the UK rather than um, the huge amount of investment that's gone on in certain parts of the country like London and the South East. So there's no reason why we shouldn't expect um, this kind of, uh, these kind of monies to be allocated um, as they've been in the past and hopefully more generously. There's, but there'll be lots of debates about exactly what, um, what format that will take. I think what's interesting on that point, Kevin, is um, obviously a lot of the ERDF funds, ESF funds, that have been taken through the um, through the through the LEP agenda, and then looked at how they were delivered through growth hubs. Um, some instances, we've got a number of the agencies which we're working with who are looking at doing things independently and actually raising a lot more match funding. And I think Mel raised that point earlier um, from a number of different areas. And sometimes the LEP agenda um, and the growth hub agenda, names in the title around growth isn't always the same agenda as the SMEs and the pre-starts and the startups. Um, so that's one of the areas which we're pushing quite hard at the moment from the NEM perspective. Um, lobbying government and putting some, we've got some meetings set up with some of the guys at Bayes in terms of saying you can't forget that pre-start and startup agenda and how that's been supported through RDF funds. Um, but once it goes, flavour of where the LEPs and the growth hubs may be focusing may be completely different. So we're still trying to make sure how that positions itself because my usual discussions um, with the LEPs and with pays and people like that is, yes, we're not necessarily looking at supporting those people who are your hairdressers, your plasterers, your builders, um, the mainstay of, of the UK economy, as, as Mel quite rightly raised, but we're looking at those which have got 20% year on year growth. Um, that isn't necessarily the marketplace which we believe and are passionate about is actually going to have the greatest impact. Yeah, 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 it's interesting. I mean, in terms of startup loans, I mean, is there any concerns that they that the startup loans will not be continued i mean i'll chip in on that I, yeah I, i'd be surprised if there's any belief that they wouldn't be continued what i would say is that the you may be familiar with it or not the um, the staff role has churned by about 70 percent in the last year right. so, so you know I'll declare the interest as having been a former non-exec on startup loan company before it merged into bbb uh, but when it moved into BBB, it took on a different form and it, it, it sort of lost some of that independence of being solely focused on small businesses. Yeah. And BBB now has a much wider agenda and th this is a small por portion of it. Um, yeah. So I think there is some concern yeah. as to whether actually that focus on small business continues or whether, whether it will drift the, the other way, particularly with the new CEO. Right. So new CEO having a background in equity finance much more likely that that's the way it goes rather than okay. supporting guys on the high street. I think, you know, that deserves a bit of focus. Well, I can rely on you to keep me focused on it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll keep <laughs> you. Let me know. Yeah, it's something that I'm passionate about. It's a great scheme. I mean, can, obviously, mm. it was, the BBB was a, a, um, effectively, um, it just um, emulated the German KFW bank, I think I'm right in saying. And, um, and also, they, they had this 25, 30k unsecured lending, which was always a great idea. So, yeah. big fan of it yeah i think the balance there which is the interesting one is that you know you might lose 20 30 percent of the loans you put out but actually the social value of those loans is is very 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 high yeah <laughs> so it, you know you've got to look at it in the, in the round between social value and actually economic return totally agree. totally agree yeah not sure that's clear enough understood clear enough understood in bbb okay understood by me and i'll make sure that if uh having those conversations that um, I'll pass that on. I think the other thing to pick up on on BBB generally is just where we've got to with the whole notion of patient capital um, and I think particularly for the startups um, and even the scale-ups too there is 
and Neelima mentioned it earlier, the sort of widening chasm between those who can make do with a, a small amount of money in the beginning where they're bootstrapping and they're proving uh, to those who can afford a Series A raise, that sort of chasm is opening up quite a lot. And I think the the funds, the sort of early stage funds that a lot of that patient capital coming out of the BBB was, was designed to support has dried mm. up and is being directed absolutely at the dead certs or the already provens um, and... I think we've seen over the last two years, particularly uh, increasingly this behavior on the part of those so-called seed VCs to describe themselves as series A and to only want to back the immediate less riskier um, startups. But that's causing major friction actually for a lot of the innovation that's coming. I think R&D tax credits to a degree can help support some of that, possibly even doing something with R&D tax credits. I love the idea of doubling EIS, but actually, you know, allowing R&D to be claimed more than once a year and, and spread out or even claimed to a greater extent, uh, maybe even in line with what we've been doing on furlough, can we get 80% back, um, would, would absolutely help some of that friction. But I do think we need to look at what's happening with patient capital too, and just make sure that it actually is patient capital and it is going in to mm -hmm. that seed stage that so you've got beyond your angel investors and your savings mm -hmm. you definitely don't have the arr and the mrr and the ability to pretend that you're a unicorn mm -hmm. um, and there's huge amounts of candy floss carved up with that but actually the money that mm -hmm. was supposed to go to support innovation and mm -hmm. growth and ideas and really inspire the next crew coming through is mm -hmm. going to the right people i don't think that's happening and there's there's mm -hmm. an awful lot being written about this now by commentators and by people within the sector itself uh, mm -hmm. within the um, investment sector itself to say this isn't happening and, and it's not what was intended it's very uh, can i just conclude on that point because i will have to go i'm very careful but uh, but thank you for inviting me i'm on that i'm a, a massive fan of patient capital and um yeah you know, what i would say is you've got some really good ideas on this call and i think some of them will not have particularly on the radar of the Treasury. Um, very keen if you, I know you put this policy papers together in terms of uh, business support, but any ideas you have like this, please set them out, make them clear, compelling, and i um, very happy to champion them on your behalf. I'll work with you on it. Um, so, uh, and you know, the R&D stuff, really good ideas. And, uh, and now is the time, of course, times of the essence. So I think Treasury's keen to listen to ideas. It will support them all. But um, yeah, I mean, generally, you know, I think some stuff, lots of things we need to do. We need to kind of decentralize the kind of whole banking sector, make it all more patient, all more German-like, where you've got lots of more mutuals in this space, uh, lots of better tax incentives, more, more um, permanent solutions that will see lots more SMEs start up flourish and but for the, in the immediate terms get through this crisis. So really appreciate you all your time and i'm sorry i couldn't uh, uh, spend more time with you but very happy to come on again in, in a few weeks time if you'd like me to do that and yep. keep in touch over the next few months it's really superb kevin thank you so much for your time today it's really appreciated um and one of the things from my perspective is that i would like to start harnessing all of the ideas which we've had here today and for those people who haven't been able to chip in feel free to all of the ideas, the details um, about how we can actually start to restructure things from, from actually an organic perspective, from us working on the ground and seeing all the things that happen. If we want to coordinate that through Carol, we can put a whole piece together, yes. share that paper, um, and then we can get that back into Kevin. As we've formulated it, we can bring him back in a couple of weeks or a month or so, um, and actually then re-engage re and have a much deeper and a much wider discussion around some of our suggestions and our ideas. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. And on behalf of us all and the National Enterprise Network, Kevin, thank you very much for your time today. Very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank all you. the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To you, Carol. Right. Um, I only would just say, um, as Alex has just mentioned, if you've got any questions or you want to send anything in, um, send it in and we'll, we'll just collate it all together. And then we'll um, look at having another uh, meeting with Kevin in maybe um, three or four weeks' time. So. Every, every, everyone should have Carol's email because she passed out the links and the, de and, the, and the dates and the details around this event. So um, yeah. please, 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 guys, as much as you possibly can. In at the moment, any ends pushing a position quite hard um, and trying to get a big dialogue going with our members and also with um, with Parliament to make sure that they are seeing the needs of restarts and startups and some of those new and emerging businesses. 
want to look at it in a whole in a whole perspective. Um, so anything which we can raise in terms of the issues which we're seeing around finance, and especially those which are, are falling through the cracks, um, all means feed it in. It doesn't matter if it's a, a two two lines or two sides of A4. From our perspective, we just need to get that data so we can start using it actively. Whilst we've got the ears of um, of the guys who want to listen, let's use them. Absolutely. So. There we go. If there's any further questions or anything anyone wants to raise as a result of, um, of the things we've said with Kevin, feel free to shout now. Otherwise, school's out. We finished early. <laughs> <laughs> Just one interesting idea from, from that conversation is if you're driving for a national startup program, which I think is what we definitely should have, it's ridiculous yep. that we've got stuff available in some places and not in others. Agree. And I'm also talking about what we've got with the ERDF program. And I think most um, most enterprise agencies would go along with the fact that the, the sort of program that we're running now around the ERDF concept of 12 hours of support, et cetera, is a pretty reasonable startup package. Why do we not pitch for the government as part of its emergency measures, putting in place a national program and where there is already a program in place, they subsidize the, the the local participate on, and where else they support a total program until those those programs so we we go from patchwork quilt to here is a national program but you're not losing any of the ER, the RDF funding that's there already so it's not costing yeah. you more than it needs to and anyway we know in the context of what the government is spending a national 12 hours business support for startups is peanuts money no yeah. Agree. You know, Agree mouth. It, it's, it's interesting. One of the things we're doing is we're putting a, putting together a whole range of different packages. Um, also looking at what are those opportunities for the business from the early stages is how do they engage? Who knows that they're starting a business? So you've got unit tax reference numbers, you've got companies house, you've got all of these sorts of areas. And I don't think we're using the data efficiently enough for us to actually say that we've got a, a program of support across the country, which can have um, local nuances. Let's be honest, there's going to be certain things in certain areas which are going to be slightly different, but we can have a core which is delivered, which actually goes from the very first days of a new business starting right away through. And the big bit for me, Mel, is it's not product driven. So a lot of the stuff around growth hubs and, and ERDF is is very much product have this product 12 hours see you later um we'll pick up with you again when we need to sell you another product this should be a journey for the business and yeah. what we should be doing is hand holding them letting them have a pick and mix service but the core is driven from a very very central base which is a national core yeah. and that's what we're trying to drive at the minute and i know carol you got an email earlier didn't you about us having further dialogue about this um uh yeah um that that was around procurement and um when um, why, why do SMEs not go for government um, contracts? So um, we'd gone, uh, we'd gone out to membership to to get their view on that, uh, which um, we then um, shared with the cabinet office, um, and they've since come back. I'm just trying to find the email. I think it's um, Martin Trainer uh, has asked. So we suggested that we ran a roundtable event. Again. Um, very similar to what we, we've done today and um, they've come back and said yeah they would really like to he would really like to do that yeah martin trainer who uh he's the sme crown representative um so he's really keen to do a round table event on that so um, we'll be pulling so that we're to, as well we, we, we're, we're trying to get more influential q and a's sorted with the people from our membership which actually can have a direct input on it the one for us, Mel, is pushing that we have a national agenda in terms of what we're delivering. We've got a discussion, interestingly, with Emma Jones on Monday. Um, I asked Carrie if we could set one up because I want to understand what the hours, the one hour support is for um, all of the SMEs are out there and how that's engaging. Because um, actually, I think that NEN needs to look at how we're supporting in a much wider remit. Um, if I'm honest, it's probably a fact finding mission for me to see what we're doing and compare it. Um, what I want to be able to do is actually go back with our, our proposal, which we put into. Um, into Paul Scully is saying this is now how we deliver it this is what our existing delivery structure is this is where we're bringing in funds already um, and what we want to do is actually show you the net value worth of all of the membership compared to new products which you're bringing in and if you are bringing them in the existing structures which are already in place and it's a, it's very much following in the lines which you're at Mel in terms of if we start to withdraw certain services and people don't realize it um, 
it's not going to be it's not going to be retained and it'll be down to us in, as individuals to try and look at what our security is for the future yeah absolutely I think in a way COVID has given us a, a big opportunity to push this agenda again. Yeah, I agree. Because I'd, I'd got to the stage, to be perfectly frank, where I'd more or less come to the view that our job in life was to survive till, till the, the heady planes of paying off my mortgage and being able to self-fund and just saying, well, you know, it's going to be chaos all over the place, but we'll still be here helping people. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to have that was exactly my forces, strategy, Mel. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> but if this forces the agenda to back yeah. to a national agenda again, that's got to yeah. be really good. And that's what we're doing. And I mean, in, interestingly, with the, with the discussions we're having, um, Department for Work and Pensions as well, and with the increase in the number of people who are on universal credit, there's suddenly, there's suddenly a really big opportunity for us saying, you know, employment, let's put self-employment in the bracket at the start, and we're pushing that agenda as well. So that, that's quite interesting when, when you start having a dialogue with some of the LEPs, when they're saying, yes, we're looking at skills and employability, and I'm saying, we need a foot at the table because there's self-employment in there. It's actually starting to raise a number of different issues. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good money. timing. There always seems to be more money in the skills agenda than in yep. the business startup agenda. Yep. So yeah. I, I think, thought for a long time that we should position ourselves as giving people the skills to start their own business. So it's part of the skills agenda. 100% agree with that, Mel. And, that, and, and if I'm honest, some of, the, some of the activities which I've done probably a little bit fly have been through the skills agenda and also through communities budget. You're looking at those people who are needing their skills development within their community and locality areas and then looking at those skills being self-employment for pulling off benefits and having a sustainable future for themselves so it's, it's it's looking at how that positions it and how you work it and some people will agree some won't agree the usual debates within local authorities around where it sits um actually we're looking at how we drive the agenda forward around self-employment i think that's so important and i think that's what makes it so exciting as well i mean we're inevitably going to see more people in self-employment because there won't be the option of employment i mean we're already starting to see it and it's it's going to be at all levels it's not just the kids coming out of university who can't find a job and there's a whole raft of them many of whom have studied business and entrepreneurship so they want to carry that journey yeah. on um, but we're seeing it through every single level people made redundant being made redundant all over the place um, and i think there is this tendency on behalf of government to think of startups as kids um, who've been scratching around in the garage actually most of my peer group I mean, Peter and I are classic examples of this <laughs> I cover mine a little bit better than Peter does but we're grey-haired right we're well well on our way into <laughs> oh, careers <laughs> I wonder what you were going to say then Merle <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Peter knows better actually so do you Alex what comes out of my mouth sometimes but, <laughs> but the point is we're going to see more and more self-employment yeah. whether that's you know, people literally running solo as freelancers or people buddying up. I think if you've been an employee and we've looked at the stats and the things on this, if you've been an employee for a long time, you want to continue to work with other people. Very few people are brave enough, skilled enough um, and accomplished enough to, to go out and do it on their own. So we've, we've got to beef up this agenda. And I, I loved what you said a moment ago, Alex, about it. this can't just be about products or marketplaces. And I think this is where eNation think that they can bung up a marketplace and give a few hours of help and Bob's your uncle, that's a tick in the box. We, we know the reality is not, is not that. We've, it's got to be a program, not a product or a bunch of products. And it's got to be real and meaningful and deep. Yeah, and I think that's why local application of something that, you know, can be configured, um, but has a, a central core is, is where the exciting opportunity is here. Because I think not only is there a very real need for this, but there's an opportunity to make a very real impact that is measurable. Yeah. Um, in I think I think it's also critical that um, it's you know Kevin was saying that you know it, it's all party um, it, an all parliamentary party group that it has to be con consistent you know I've just done a, a study fellowship and I went and did some work in and looking and studying in Australia and the US and the thing is you know in one of the Australian programs that they've got for business startup is 34 years old yeah and they haven't messed around with it. They haven't sort of tweaked it. And done, whereas we get a change of government or a change of even minister yeah. who decides that they're, they're on a mission to sort of, you know, do something different. What we've got to do is get, a, you know, a cross government agreement yeah, that if yeah. we're going to do a national startup program, 
do it for you know 10 15 years yep. so really. that those people coming from schools and universities as well as like you say the other group you know the ones like you know I, I'm, a, I'm of an age you know i started my first business at 35 you know there's it's, it, you don't know where these people are going to come from but they need right. to know that it consistently it, you know if you if you decide right in five years time i'm going to start my own business you know in five years time there is going to be a support network yep. there for you Absolutely. and it's the same and it's not going to be different and it's not going to be awkward because you know i'll be giving my you know children and grandchildren advice to sort of go and do it but you know i i don't give them you know, oh yeah you can go to a national enterprise network person you can go to e-nation you can go to here you can go to wherever because god knows if it will be there and so yeah, i think there's yeah. a real thing that it, the government has got to say whatever happens they're going to put you know and i think a national absolutely a national network and a national place where people can go and it's there in every corner of the uk yeah. but it's got yeah. to stay and it doesn't matter whether it's a change of government, change of minister, change of thought, but it stays. Because if you don't get that, yeah. you just don't get any, any traction. You remember the, uh, the meeting with the uh, shadow uh, secretary? Bill Esterson. Bill Esterson. Yeah, Bill Esterson, Mel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He was, he was very interested in the American model. And I said, yeah, the American model has been going since 1952 without political interruption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And the one in Australia is we exported the program to them and they've left it alone. Yeah. You know, yeah. they've con it's consistent. So it goes through their TAFE system, their school system, you know, it goes yes. through all areas. And yet we. And their system of, will have you know, improved because of that, yeah. because they will have learned through that process and added things to it and built on it. Whereas we keep throwing the balls up in the air, so then no improvement ever happens because we're always going back and rebuilding. Yeah, let's do something different. Why? Exactly. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, exactly. Well, well interesting. We've got some history. Any end's been here since 1992. So we can start building on what we're doing. I think we need a stronger voice, a bigger voice. And, and, and as I keep saying to a number, number of the guys who are on the membership saying, noisy if we can be noisy and we can get people to be aware that we're out there and we're doing things and actually we've got a real in, in my words an underground army of people who, have got, who are passionate and have belief and want this to be delivered this is the time to be noisy right? yeah. so this is this is what we're doing we've got to get out there there's an opportunity for us um as mel said covid19 has been disastrous for some organizations but actually this is where we can start putting the support structures in place and saying look we've been doing this for a long long period of time probably oblivious to some of the, the leps and the growth hubs where they haven't engaged, if I'm honest. Um, and now's the time to start saying, this is what we're doing. This is how we're positioning ourselves. Um, and Carol and I are working with a number of other strategic partners to actually say, let's start raising the game. This isn't a facade of, yes, we can give everyone an hour. Um, it's actually something which is really, really driven hard. And if we can get a product which we can put nationally, then we'll start doing it. We'll just sh start showing people how it's being done. Rather than asking for permission, we're just going to crack on with it and let everyone know. Shut up now, because I can go on forever. <laughs> and it's Friday afternoon and it's nearly half past. Um, yep. So thank you very, very much to everyone who's been on this afternoon. I know we're all very, very busy people. Um, all I can say is thank you for your support for the NEN. Thanks for being on these question and answer sessions. What we're doing now is really raising people's eyebrows in terms of our engagements and our knowledge. Today was superb. We had nearly all different areas of the country on. Um, so we've gone right from the north right down to the deep south. Um, so for me, that was superb. And it shows the actual, um, actual ability for us to understand our beneficial and our clients. And not only that, what the issues are. So thank you very, okay. very, very much. Okay. And see you all soon. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Cheerio. Bye. -bye. Cheerio. Bye. 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 Hey, right, Peter. All right, that went all right, didn't it? Yeah, that was great. Did well, yeah. Good. You still there, Peter? You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Good, good, good. So I was just trying to find the screen. I was trying to do something else. But I no, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Kevin's a good Kevin's a good guy. We get we're getting a lot of traction at the minute, Peter. So I wanted to say a big thank you to um to you for putting those words and things together as well for us. And um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of discussion. And just so you're aware, um, I had a big discussion with Matt Smith yesterday. Um, from Centre for Entrepreneurs. I'm going to be catching up with him as well later. And um, he's pushing our agenda massively through the policy side of things and saying that we should be sitting at the table, not just um, Enterprise Nation. Any end should be on there. It's a different product. It's a different positioning. Um, yeah. And he's really, really keen. We're also looking at whether or not we um, co-opt him onto the board of NEN as well. 
yeah, that'd be good. That'd so, be yeah, good. It's, 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 it's happening. There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, I, think, you know, I mean, Ke Kevin's quite a useful one to have there now, and he's yeah. really got him in the pocket. Um, <laughs> so I think it is worth us, um, you know, within a week, 10 days, getting back with, we've collated some of these ideas yeah. and put them in, and maybe categorise them. There's probably three or four that are there that are relevant. Yeah. Don't let's pepper in with them. Um, but I think that, you know, it's worth us just keeping him running on that. I mean, I yeah. showed him some stuff this morning and it's just keep the traction going, keep the traction going. He's clearly listened to whether they do anything about what he says is another issue. But yeah. he, he's, you know, he's got their ear. So, and, and for me, it's important. It was interesting when I was on the other, the other uh, debate which we were having, how people were listening to what his thoughts were, coming at it from his, his, his property background and, and his commercial side of things, um, and actually saying, well, that's not just going to work, is it? You know, It's okay having these great um, banking ideas and government ideas, but for Christ's sake, if we're going to get a 60% default on it, how the hell are we going to move it forward? You know, we, We're actually just creating zombie companies by throwing money at them. It is quite interesting, actually, because when, when they started to put the, the um, C bills and the B bills together, yeah. I was the one going to him saying, this ain't going to work, Kevin, right? Yeah. And why. And he was the one pushing back saying, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's yeah. fine. So when he <laughs> predicted, it's like one stage removed that you're getting. Yeah. But no, I think, you know, he's genuine. He's genuine. You know, he's, a, he's a good guy and, and, he, and he understands where we're coming from. It's not a, he's, he's not a policy-driven theorist. He's yeah. actually going, shit, yeah, we've had these issues. I'm trying to grow a business. This is what we've had to go through and it is difficult. Yeah. So. Okay. That's good. Good stuff. Oh, nice one, Peter. Thanks right. ever so much for your support as always. Yeah, good stuff. Good weekend. Yeah, Andrew, take care. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Oh, Alex, before you go, um, yes. did you see oh. that email? I wasn't going anywhere. I was just catching up with you, really. Oh. Um, Which one are we on about, Carol? Uh, I sent you what I was looking to, to send out to uh, Gemma Peak and... Oh, okay. Um, We've got board minutes for Rilio, um mm. Gemma Peck. Yeah, that. Sorry, I didn't. Um, I only picked up your your chats um, a bit later on, but um, yeah, that um, Nilemma was from um, Frilia. Good. That is good. We're, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. I think he got a bit fed up with it though, didn't he? He wanted to shut her up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, what's her name? Emma. Um, recently, I'll, I'll put recently speaking with Matt Smith from the Center for Entrepreneurs. Um, and he suggested I make contact with you in my capacity as chair of the National Enterprise Network. That's fine. Yeah, so it's, it's all good, Carol. I have no issue with it whatsoever. Yeah. Let's get it out there. Yeah, let's get okay, it out. That's fine. So, I'll get I mean, what things. I'm trying to do is raise as much profile as I possibly can. Um, yeah. In all of the areas that we can, and just be noisy, be really, really noisy. That um, that's a bit of a result with getting that um, round table with that Martin trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, now, um, Lisa had it was her suggestion, and she said that she would be happy to to yeah. be involved in that host it as such. Yeah. So I thought I'd just go back to her and say that we've we've got a bit of a result here. Yeah. Um, let's try and get this off the ground kind of thing. Are you okay with that? Or yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Let's get it all sorted. <laughs> and and the thing for me as well is if we get all of this in place and people, what I really like is we're getting different people coming on the Q and A sessions. Yeah. And yeah. and actually, if people if people think that they've got the ability to have an input into parliamentary figures via the National Enterprise Network. I mean, I was really interested with the guys from London who were just on there. They didn't really ask many questions. They're on. And that, that for me is really, really interesting.